Okay. Well, welcome and thank you for attending the closing ceremony of the San Mandala. It's been great working with the monks this week and it's been a pleasure having everyone come in and check out the San Mandala and also attend the Sacred Music, Sacred Dance performance last night. So right now I'm gonna welcome Tenzin, who is the spokesperson for the Mr. Chorus of Tibet. So he'll tell you a little bit more about the culture and the San Mandala before it is dismantled. So just give that minute. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the closing ceremony of Mandala Saint Tenzin. By, <coughs> do you hear me, everybody? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> By Tibetan monks from Devon Losing Monastery in South India. Uh, as we all know that uh, over the past several days, the monk has spent many painstaking hours of work to create this magnificent Saint Tenzin Mandala right before here. Looks very fascinating. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you know, like for the next 20 minutes, uh, the monks are going to perform uh, a, like ceremony to consecrate uh, this complete uh, the form of mandala with chanting, meditation, and mantra meditations. <laughs> Uh, and also, uh, uh, during the ceremony, so they will use some the instruments. So if I say the significance of them. So on the one side, on this side, so on the one side, one, one side, so at the end, one end, uh, the monks are going to be in the row, in the line, standing. So at, at one side, the monks will hold, like to play the uh, long horns, the very big ones. <coughs> uh, so. This long horn signify the strength of earth. And the other sides, the monks will, you know, like you will see the short horn, but, you know, short horn, shorter ones. And uh, it signifies the subtlety of hearing. And other instruments with the same old drums, and, you know, like sim uh, signify the, uh, the hearings and the method through which hearings and uh, earth brought into harmony. And uh, during the chantings, uh, monk will invoke the presence of uh, Tara, the female Buddha, since this is the mandala of Tara. The Tara, the female Buddha, represents the enlightened activity uh, through which uh, benefits others. <coughs> uh, and uh, the invoke, like, uh, and play, like, ask her blessing for healing and harmony. Uh, uh, here in this area, and also people uh, living here. Uh, with this, uh, the purpose of creating the mandala has been accomplished. Uh, now, the mandala will be deconstructed or destroyed uh, to symbolize the impermanence of all things and phenomena. Uh, and also implement like like our like uh, the real nature of our being, like implement like, like like our being implement implement nature of our being. Uh, it is very really important to realize the impermanence, the actual nature of our beings, being impermanence. You know, usually because we grasp with feeling and thoughts, you know, we grasp at permanence for things to you know like for things, for person, for ourselves. That's why, you know, like when we speak to each other, even, you know, like the way we use the language, oh, nice to see you again and again. We feel that the same person see again and again. Actually, it's, you know, it's impossible. <laughs> the past is already gone, you know? But still, with our feeling and our thoughts, you know, how it grasps. And, and because of grasping at permanence, this is very much misconceptions or misthinking. Because of grasping at permanence, uh, this grasping of permanence lies at the root of other negative emotions, like frustrations, you know, craving, grasping, and uh, anger, attachments. Uh, <coughs> so, and uh, they are induced by grasping of permanence. 
and through which uh, yeah, eventually we face problems. We know who develop, like who, who, who generate negative emotion face the problems. So uh, uh, when you develop the realization of impermanence in relation to things, phenomena, selves, and others, uh, the, the certain degree of negative emotion reduced, and re eventually you are peaceful. You receive the peace. And uh, how to say, it affects the environment. And in effect, it affects the uh, surround, your surrounding family, friends. Yes, and also, uh, uh, like, on top of realization of impermanence, it is uh, important to develop like emotional part also. You know, like not not the intellectual only, the emotional part, in the positive part, like love, compassion. You know, yeah. Through that, you will reduce your own negative emotions. And uh, you, how to say, uh, you promote peace and harmony in your family, between your first and your family and friends and all uh, surrounding you. Uh, this is the small message that we are sharing with you with creating the mandala. And also, you know, like that one thing one, I want to add one more thing. To, to do that, you know, we have to do with meditation, you know, so that's why meditation when we talk about that, you, uh, we, we don't even think about its kind of religion. Actually, it is like a secular training for our emotional well-being and our health, the mental health. You know, if I use one example, uh, for example, uh, to have like the physically health, the physically good health, good health. So uh, what we do, so we go to fitness centers and do lots of exercise and also take nutrition for physically healthy. At the same time, so, you know, for emotional health, for mental health, inner health, what we need to do, we need to develop only positive attitude with meditation. So that's why meditation is kind of nutrition for your emotional health. It's like kind of secular training that everybody can do, whether you are from whatever religious background you may have, or you are atheist, you know, non-believer, no problems. Everybody needs meditation. And uh, you try and you will know. Uh, and uh, after the ceremony, uh, uh, the monk will uh, destroy, like, uh, they start to destroy or sweep, sweep up the sands. And uh, they put the sand into the container, the Samboja sands, uh, in a, like, in a sense that uh, we, uh, we will bring it to the like the creek, little creek here. So, and before pouring the sand into the creek, uh, some monks will do brief ceremony for healing. And one of the purpose of pouring the sands into the water, the creek, is that uh, like uh, like sending healing energy through water. And uh, in that way, the healing energy reach like numberless of living creature. Who are, who are live, those are living in the water. And also because of the evaporation of water and formation of clouds, the healing energy spread uh, uh, all over the world. And, uh, and also the uh, monks will distribute the sand, some sand, the healing sands, to each of you. And you can take it with you, and you can share with your friends uh, who could be benefited from the sand. And uh, the, 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 you can just leave it in your room or in your office, the sand office, or uh, yes, and something like the clean place. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, I, I would like to take this uh, wonderful opportunity uh, to thank the, the university and to thank Cassie Kelly and all the individuals who work so hard to make this even possible. And Dribbung Los Limons are particularly grateful to you for providing the warm receptions, friendly climax, and generous hospitality throughout our stay here. And I would like to thank every one of you for coming here today to join us in our common aspiration to promote peace and harmony. 
uh, on this uh, earth. And also, especially, thank you very much from the depth of my heart to support Tibetan culture and Tibet. Thank you very much.
Thank mm -hmm. you. 
just trying to get to the